Mina san konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what makeup products are the most popular in Japan right this second. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and channel it shatte so a couple months ago, I did a similar video including skincare products that were the top ranking most popular currently in Japan. And a lot of you guys said that you wanted to see a makeup version as well. So if you haven't seen that video already, please go check it out first because I kind of do a lot of explaining in that and I don't really want to repeat myself all over again. But we are going to be looking at the website at Cosme. This is literally like the number one go-to website if you want any information on beauty products in Japan. I will state that it doesn't exclusively talk about Japanese products. It talks about all beauty products, but what is trending and what is most popular in Japan by Japanese people. The rankings get updated weekly. So that is why I choose to look at this because it is literally what is popular right this second in Japan. And I thought that might be interesting because a lot of the time it's not the same as the Japanese products that are popular globally. So we're gonna take a look at the popular makeup products in Japan right this second. This is the homepage. I often don't recommend this to my international viewers because as you can see, it is all in Japanese and very, very text heavy. But I'm going to go into the ranking section and then go by makeup. So this is the makeup section. They have a section just for SPFs, which we might take a look at because I know a lot of people are interested in the SPFs and I didn't include them last time. Let's see what is most popular in um. See, this is why I didn't do it last time, I feel like, because they do include makeup that has SPF in it. I am looking at the SPF for face specifically. Number one is the La Roche-Posay UV Idea XL Protection Tone Up Rose. So I know this has been popular forever. Obviously, it has ranked number one for a while and it has won um, awards as well. I'm pretty sure my mom used this for a really long time. It is a tinted SPF, so it's essentially like a SPF BB cream. Personally, I actually have never used it because I don't really like tinted SPFs. I like to use a like an SPF SPF and then wear whatever makeup I Wood. Number two is Paul and Joe Protecting Foundation Primer. So it's actually second ranking in the primer category, but also second ranking in UV protection, which I'm kind of like, eh. I wish they'd do just SPF, like true SPFs. Well, apparently it is SPF 50 plus and PA plus 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 plus, and it comes in two colors. Number three, looks like we do have a actual SPF and it is the Nivea UV Deep Protect and Care Gel. I haven't tried this yet, but I'm pretty sure. Did I buy this one? I made a purchase on Yesstar recently of a bunch of Japanese SPF and I'm, oh no, maybe not. I thought I put it in my cart and then I think I took it out. But this is number three. Um, it is a gel SPF, um, obviously SPF 50, I assume. Yep, SPF 50, PA++++. So they do also have an essence version of it. Pretty sure this was the one I was considering buying and then... Never did. Number four, another La roche Perse UV Idea Protection Tone Up. I think this is literally just the other color of the number one. And then the Anessa Perfect UV Skincare Milk. Now, this is an absolute staple for so many people in Japan. I'm pretty sure like every single person has used this before, including myself. I have used this. I'm just not the biggest fan of milk formulas. This is a milk formula SPF. I do prefer essence and gel types, but they say this one is just really, really high protection. The golden essa is just like, okay, you can't go wrong with it. You won't get like sun damage if you wear this. This is how they promote it. But it is expensive and that's why I don't recommend it as much. In Japan, the 60 mil is 3,300 yen, which is pretty expensive because the Nivea water gel, this one is 140 grams, more than double the 60 mils. And I think it's like 1,000 to 1,500 yen. So the Inessa is like, what, four or five times the price? So I don't know, it's hard to be like, yes, um, drown my face in this because it is expensive. So I feel like you kind of use it sparingly, which defeats the purpose of 
um, SPF. For me, I feel like you can get the same protection getting something cheaper and something that feels a little bit more comfortable on the skin, personally speaking. But this is really good for humid weather. If you're going to the beach and stuff, it is pretty waterproof. Like it doesn't come off that easily. Next one is the Cosme de Corte Sun Shelter Tone Up CC. This is again a tone up one. It has three different colors. I guess that's just like an option a lot of people go for is getting something tinted. And then And B UV Milk. I haven't even heard of this brand before actually. Again, another tinted one because it says there's a natural beige and then a stand oh I guess they have a tinted version and then an untinted version oh it's actually quite like thick by the texture and quite a creamy texture oh wow it does look nice so it is obviously a toning up formula but really really natural looking from what I can tell Japan likes a lot of tone up stuff but the thing is not all skin tones can use it obviously most people in Japan are Japanese um, they're not as say multicultural as Australia so most people would probably be able to get away with the one or two color options but as soon as you take it globally like obviously the skin tones are gone, not gonna suit so many people out there Carnival fresh day cream so so again it's not like a true SPF it is a day cream with SPF 15 and the last one is a Lancome UV Expert tone up rose so another toning up one I think this is why I didn't include it in my first video because they're not like actual SPFs that's that I'm sorry if that was a letdown but hey guys so I thought I'd hop on here real quick and have a quick look at the body kind of SPF rankings as well because this is more what I was wanting to see and expecting and I can guarantee you that all of these SPFs actually can be used on the face and body so I feel like this is more of a true ranking of true SPFs that I was talking about. So I'm going to go through them really quickly for you guys. So the top three were all in the SPF face rankings that you just saw. Number one, Nibia um, UV Deep Protect and Care Gel. Number two, the Anessa. And number three, the And B. But from beyond here, I don't believe any of them were in the face ranking. And all of them, as I said, can be used for face and body. So number four is the Ali Extra UV Gel N. I have used a couple Ali products in the past and they were really nice. Although they were slightly more expensive than your kind of average Biore and Nivea. So I probably haven't um, repurchased them as much. Number five is the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence, which we all know and love. Um, still ranking in number five after how many, however many years it's been out. Number six is the Skin Aqua Tone Up UV Essence. I have talked about my thoughts on this one and unfortunately it is not a huge favorite of mine. I feel like it just peels on the skin, but I have heard a lot of people who do have oilier skin um, can use this and really like it. And personally, I do love the way it looks when you first apply, but as I said, it peels. So that's why I don't like it too much. Uh, number seven is the Nivea Super Water Gel, which is another favorite. I've mentioned it so, so many times. Number eight is another Anessa. It is the Perfect UV Skincare Gel. Number nine is another Ali product, the New Ones Nuance Change UV Gel. I wonder what the difference is between this one and this one. This one looks like it's a plain one, whereas this one does, does say WT, which I'm wondering if that means like white, like another tone up one. And number 10 is the Biore UV Athleism Skin Protect Essence, which I did mention in my best of 2020 skincare products. So that's ranking number 10. And they are the popular true SPFs right now in Japan, which is what I like to see more. It's definitely what I like to see more. They're all just like plain SPFs. A couple are tone ups and um, as I said, they can be used both for face and body. So yeah, but let's go into base makeup. We're just going to go foundation. My hair's looking kind of like interesting today. Wow, already I see new Japanese brands on the top three. Number one foundation is the Lancome Tani Doll. So hard to read it when it's in katakana. Tint Idol Ultra Wear. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. That is the number one favorite. Number two, Estee Lauder Double Wear. Stay in place makeup. I feel like everybody knows this one. I have bought this one in the past as well. Uh, number three is the Dior Skin Forever Fado. 
Fade Glow. Fade 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 Glow. <laughs> That's number three. Number four, we finally have a Japanese brand, although it's like Japanese global brand. Shu Emra Unlimited Lasting Fade Fluid or Fluid. <laughs> I've actually never tried Shuma products because they're so expensive. I'm just like a cheapo. I don't use luxury um, brand makeup. Number five, Nas Pure Lady Anto Protection Aquatic Glow Cushion Foundation. What? I would love to try the Nars cushion. I am definitely a cushion gal. Um, I think I've been converted. Cushion is just easier. You can get that nice glowy finish and it does have a nice coverage a lot of time. For me, I don't like anything too heavy. So I feel like cushions are really easy to control the amount of coverage you get. Number six is another cushion foundation, the Yves Saint Laurent Ankle the cushion number seven is Maybelline fit me liquid foundation which is impressive fit me has been around for so long I remember like everyone getting it when I was in high school and it is still very popular and doing well so I'll give them that and it's a drugstore brand so very affordable number eight is Flora Messier Flor flawless Lumiere Ladians Perfecting Cushion, another cushion foundation. They are killing the game. Number nine, NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Cushion Foundation. Number 10 was the only Japanese um, branded product, the Maquillage Dramatic Powdery X. I think this is the one I actually bought, but it looks like they changed the packaging. It used to be just like a sideways long, but it looks like they put the like powder puff on top now which I like that's way more compact and I did like it like for a powder foundation it gave such good coverage surprising amount of coverage at first it can look powdery but if you put a spray on or wait like a couple hours it kind of just sinks into your skin and looks really natural I actually opened the ranking for powder foundations because I thought it might be interesting and I think powder foundations actually have pretty much all Japanese brands because powder foundation is actually really really popular in Japan and have continued to be popular I feel like back in the day when like matte makeup non glowy makeup was in powder was like more popular now everyone wants that glowy look which is going to be e easier to achieve with a liquid or cushion but in Japan powder is still really popular because it is natural looking and not very high coverage which is pretty common in Japan a lot of people don't wear heavy makeup in Japan it's just like the beauty standard there the maquillage one is ranking number one in powder foundations the second one is the integrate pro finish foundation which Integrate is probably pretty cheap. Yeah, the powder itself is 1870 So it's like half the price of the maquillage and it's ranking second. So I would be very curious to try that. Number three, Arubion Primp Powderlist. Primp Powderlist? What kind of name is that? Primp Powderlist. I don't know what that would mean in English. <laughs> Number four is Covermark Silky Fit, which this Covermark brand has been like kind of popping up a lot lately. I had never seen it when I lived in Japan. Yeah, this cleansing milk that they have is like really popular. I'm pretty sure it came up last time when I was doing the skincare um, rankings as well. Number five, Safine, Safine Silhouette Powder. Number six, Kogendo My Fun my fancy glow film the foundation isn't it so funny how they give all these makeups even japanese ones like english names and yet i can guarantee you most people who are using this don't even know what these words mean like my fancy glow film like japanese people wouldn't know what that means <laughs> number seven chanel leblanc compacto radiance number eight esprit synchro fit synchro fito pacto number nine is another Albion product and then number 10 is elegance so they are the powder foundations let's go into something like mascara I feel like everybody can use this mascara no matter what your like skin tone and lash type mascara is always an interesting one I feel like most people do use mascara am I right am I wrong Ooh. Ooh, I think I like what I'm seeing so far. I recently bought a couple mascaras from Japan. I bought some 
like on Amazon Japan and sent it to my family for them to send it to me. And then I bought some on Yes Style as well. So I'm waiting for these mascaras to arrive and I'm very, very excited because I've got a couple that I like over here, but I feel like I had pretty good success with Japanese mascaras. So the number one one is the Can Make Quick Lash Curler, which I actually love. I think I still have it. It's just like ruined. Yeah, here we go. So I still have it, although I'm running pretty out of it and you can tell that I have used it to death because all the labeling has come off but it's such a little compact mascara so it's great for if you need to carry it around in your bag and it is just like a comb type mascara which I was obsessed with when I was younger and it's really common in Japan because a lot of big clunky mascaras it's hard to get in there and get your lashes if you have short and small lashes um which i do i've always found that comb ones are really like useful and easier to get into and get all those little fine lashes so i have loved this one and i recently purchased two other colors the wine mauve and then the baked orange the hidoi make long up mascara Ooh, is that different so i've got the long end curl mascara which again i really really like it's like a film type of mascara and I feel like it makes my lashes look super long and this is a long up mascara so I guess it's another lengthening one I haven't tried it I wish I bought it it looks really nice number three deja vu nurutsuke Nurutsukematsuge <laughs> lash up. Basically, nurutsukematsuge means like a false lashes that you can paint on. And this is the lash up version. It looks like a really small um, little brush on it as well. Number four, Opera My Lash Advanced. That's interesting. Opera is actually most well known for their lip products, like their lipsticks. Didn't know that their mascaras were so popular. Number five, Maybelline New York Lashinista. Oh my god, what a throw back i loved this one when i was it was probably when i was in uni maybe still a student they only have this mascara in japan or maybe other asian countries but they don't have it in australia or america even i think but this pink one lashinista i actually really really liked it i think i even have a review video on my channel from like years ago i wish they sold it over here as well number six hiroi make long and karu mascara advanced film that's the one i was talking about so this is number six. I do like it. I have the brown. The brown is brilliant. I probably should get the black as well. But I think I bought the brown again. Number seven is can make quick lash curler separate. What does that mean? Oh, maybe it's a... Maybe it's a like primer because it says it's third in mascara, primer and top coat. Not like a plain mascara. Man, there's so many products that I just don't get to see every day and it's so sad. I can't wait to go back to Japan. Number eight, another deja vu one. Um, Nurutsuke Matsuge. Fiber wig. Wig? Fiber wig? Urutora Rongu. Number nine, Humi. I think that's how you pronounce it. Long and curl mascara. This one's like a brand that's kind of come up recently in the last few years because it wasn't that huge when I lived there, but I feel like I see it pretty often now. And then number 10 is the Clinique Lash Power Mascara Long Wearing Formula. I feel like Japanese people love a Lancome and Clinique. It seems to always come up. What should we do next? Mm eyeshadow i don't like japanese eyeshadow so we're gonna go with eyeliner <laughs> i'm hoping some good liquid liners because liquid liners are my jam number one can make creamy touch liner Ooh, oh it's a gel eyeliner number one can make is killing the makeup game they are so affordable like in japan i mean even online i'm pretty sure they're pretty affordable yes style has quite a good variety msh love liner Oh, love liner. I used to use this when I was in school, but the packaging is like completely different. Man, they've changed it so many times because I was obsessed with this eyeliner. And then they repackaged it and changed it and made it a felt tip instead of brush tip, which I like a brush tip. And so I stopped using it because I didn't like it anymore. But then I guess they've redone it again. They've got black, dark brown, brown, milk brown, and gray. Well, I guess I have to give him another go. Laura Messier, Caviar Stick Eye Color. Number four, Uzu Eye Opening Liner. I know this one has been really popular in Japan for a while, and they've got a bunch of different colors. I do own the pink, and 
funnily enough, I wore it today. I don't know if you can tell. I love the design. I love the variety of colors, but I have read that not all colors come out very pigmented. I think if you went for like regular browns and blacks, it'd probably be really good, but it is hard to make like a yellow and white eyeliner look like flawless. Number five, Hiroi Meiku Prime Liquid Eyeliner Rich Key. This might be the one I bought. I bought one of those recently in like a brown, natural brown color. Am I yes style order? Yes. Number six, Deja Vu. You see that they come up a lot in um, eyeliners and mascara and it's because that's all they focus on. They only do like eyebrows, mascara and eyeliner and that's pretty much all they offer in their product range they don't do any face and lip makeup and it's pretty common in japan where some brands just focus on that and they don't offer a full product variety so i think that's why you would see the same brands like popping up in the same categories so another deja vu one this is a cream pencil and then number seven is another deja vu oh this is short brush liquid probably means it's really like sturdy if it's like a short tip it's so cute it's in like a purple packaging number eight is again Hiroi Miku smooth liquid eyeliner super keep number nine is Kate double line expert I wonder what that means my number one eyeliner when I was in school was the Kate gel liner I was obsessed oh they have a little video I wonder why they call a double line. Such a faint color though. And then number 10 is Echuse Eye Edition gel liner, which Echuse I have used in the past and I'm pretty sure that I used a gel liner from them. It's all right, I feel like it's still smudged. Okay, we'll just do one more because this video is already super long. Lip products or blush? Oh, do both. <laughs> oh, interesting. Number one, we've got Kate Lip Monster. Kate is known for doing pretty bold colors in Japan. A lot of Japanese brands kind of play it safe and do lots of really soft tones, which is going to be the most popular in Japan anyway. But Kate does do quite a few striking colors. Looks like just like a regular cream lip. Number two is the Dior Addict Lip Maximizer. It's an icon, that tube, everyone knows this one. Number three is the Rom and juicy lasting tint so a korean brand which if we think about it we haven't seen any korean brands thus far i love romand and their lip products they're really really nice and very affordable i think i bought a couple um on yesstar recently <laughs> as well number four is suzanne which we haven't seen any suzanne so far their watery tint lip it looks much identical from the Romand one by looking at that. Number five is Opera Lip Tint. I said this earlier, Opera is really known for their lipsticks and here we are. It is ranking in number five. Number six, Yves Saint Laurent, Laurent, I don't know how to say it, Luge, Volupe. Volupe Shine. I know which one it is. I can't remember how to say it, but this one is also like very iconic. Number seven is another Yves Saint Laurent product. Luge Pure Couture. Veruni Water Stain. Pure Couture Ver Veruni Water Stain. I don't know. Number eight, Fujiko. This is another brand that's been popping up in Japan lately. They seem to be hitting the mark with a lot of the makeup products and it is a very cute packaging. Number nine, Dior Rouge Dior Forever Liquid. And number 10 is Chanel Lip Rouge Adieu Black. Good. So again, a lot of Western brands. Lastly, we're going to do some blushes. In Japan, they do call blush cheek. They literally call it cheek because you put it on your cheek. Oh, number one is Cezanne, Par Grow Highlight. So I guess that's a highlighter, not a blush, but that's okay. They're in the same category. Number two, Laura Mercier, Blush Color Infusion. Number three, another Cezanne, Natural Cheek. Number four, Can Make Cream Cheek. The three out of the four. A super affordable 660 yen for the top one, 396 yen, like four bucks, and then 638 for the cream cheeks. So all like easily, easily under 10 bucks. One of my subscribers actually sent me a cream blush from Can Make. I'm actually wearing it today. 
think I failed it a little bit in applying it because it was more pigmented than I thought. I love the formula. It's so creamy. It blends really, really easily. I actually bought a couple more colors on YesStyle, not knowing that the one she sent me was a cream. I thought it was a powder and then I used it and I was like, this formula is beautiful. So I am glad I bought some other colors. Number five is the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish. Number six, Clodopore Leo Sud i never heard of it. Number seven, the NARS blush. Number eight, three, Smiling Glow Duo. That's obviously like a shading um, one with a highlighter and shader. Three is also another brand that's really popular in Japan that I feel like people don't really know that much of. It is like mid-range expensive. Um, their skincare is also really popular. Number nine, Dior Backstage Face Glow Palette. And then number 10 is Givenchy. Purism Le Boudou Brush. So some high-end ones. But anyway, I think that's about it for this video. Um, they always go for a really long time because I talk about so many different products at once. Maybe this one would be interesting to do like in a live stream. I have been thinking that I want to do a bit more live streaming. I know I say that and I've done like one or two in the past but I think it would be one that's interesting that we could just chat about because they do t tend to run for a little bit longer but let me know if you would want to see it in that form and what you thought of this video and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one bye